So there's been a lot of talk these days about AI and how it's gonna impact the music industry, but did you know that quite a few respectable and famous artists have signed a petition that they sent to US Congress that is supposed to like restrict AI? Names such as Stevie Wonder, uh, Nora Jones, Jason Isbell, Sam Smith, they have all signed this petition. And even though the music industry is currently being impacted by AI, I don't think it's going to be that bad as everybody thinks. And let me tell you why. And also, before we start, I need to say this. This video is not sponsored by anyone. And it is just me sharing my thoughts and opinions on this whole matter. And I might be wrong, I might be right, uh, but I would love to hear your thoughts and just after the video, just leave them in the comments and tell me what you think because I really want to have a discussion with you guys on this whole thing. But before talking about AI, we really need to come to an agreement on what music really is. And I have always seen music as an artistic form of expression. It is just like painting, but instead of using brushes, you're using instruments. And instead of having a blank canvas, you have silence. And then you start painting that silence by adding rhythm, harmony, and melody. Every culture has its own way of expressing themselves musically. And as we all know, Indian and Turkish music don't really sound that similar to Western music. And let me simplify this. As an example, the Western music does not have the intricacies or the embellishments and ornaments that are very common in the melodic expressions uh, that we can hear in Indian music, nor does it have the complicated or complex rhythms and polyrhythms of Indian music. But why though? It is all very simple, because it is all about the influences. We all learn music as we grow up, every each and one of us. Even if you're not a musician, you will get accustomed to the musical expressions that are common in your society, because music is in a way a form of language. So if you grew up in India and you got accustomed to it, and and you're a musician you will surely get influenced by it and even though you might not want your music to sound like that the influences are still going to come through in your playing and in the same way you can hear from my expression that i'm not a native english speaker and for those of you that have heard the people from the balkans speaking in english you would probably immediately recognize that i'm actually from serbia and there was a study that showed that our musical taste is being formed until the ages of 13 or 14 years old and our musical taste accounts for everything that we have heard in those early years. For me, I've heard a lot of jazz and blues because of my father that played it a lot, but I have also heard a ton of pop music that my mother played and way too much folk music that was being played literally everywhere outside my house. And since I'm from a broken home, the only thing that made us all happy and when everybody was chill, it, like it was music. And that is quite possibly why I decided to be a musician. And me listening to jazz and blues is the reason why I picked up the guitar and why Whenever I'm playing it, it sounds like Clapton or Gary Moore, but I still don't mind hearing the folk accordion and I don't shy away from using the melodic minor in my songs because I was influenced by that kind of music when I was a kid. Now, just like any language, all music that was ever made is comprised of reusing the similar phrases, rhythms and harmony. That musicians have picked up along the way. And if you don't like that I'm comparing music to language, you should watch Victor Wooden's tech talk that he had like 10 years ago on how music is very comparable to language. When I look back on that and how I was taught, I realized that I wasn't really taught, which is why I say that music is a language. Because if you think about your first language, for me and probably most of us here, it might be English, so I'm just gonna go with English. If you think about how you learned it, you realize you weren't taught it. People just spoke to you. But the coolest thing, this is where it gets interested, interesting is you were allowed to speak back. Now, if I take the music example, in, in most cases, our beginners are not allowed to play with the, the, the better people. You're stuck in the beginning class. But with language, to use a musical term, even as a baby, you're jamming with professionals. <laughs> All the time to the point that you don't even know you're a beginner. The easiest way of understanding this is to talk about the blues. In its essence, blues is using a pentatonic scale, which means that out of 12 notes that we have in an octave, only five of them are being used, and most of the blues harmony is comprised of just three chords. The one, the four, and the five. 
And of course, some songs are going to have some variations in the harmony, and some players might go outside of the box and play phrases that are not in the pentatonic scale. But the blues, in its essence, is comprised of only three chords, on top of which you build a song with phrases that you have picked up along the way. So on top of that harmony, you would solo or sing in a way that you already heard, like from B.B. King, from Buddy Guy, from uh, whoever, Ather James, or it doesn't matter. So when it comes to guitar, you like me making music with a guitar, you have common phrases, and in practice it sounds like this. That was a BB King lick. That was a Jimi Hendrix lick. That was also a Jimi Hendrix click, but modified. But why is this important? Because it's very important to understand that we are all learning from each other, and we are all getting inspired by each other, and we're all borrowing phrases and ideas from one another. And it's not uncommon for famous musicians to talk about how they took phrases or musical ideas from one another simply because they were inspired by their music and they wanted to incorporate that into their own music. And the perfect example would be John Mayer talking to B.B. King about how he stole all his stuff during one of their live performances. Every day I wake up, I put BB King on just to remember how to do it right. More BB King links. It's like stealing something from somebody right in front of them. Here's what I'm taking from your house. I'm taking your silverware. He's like, you all right. You keep that up, I'm gonna get up and go. You keep it up, I'm gonna get up and walk out of it. Or let's take a look at Pino Palladino, one of the most famous bass players ever, and one of the like greatest bass players that ever lived. In the clip where he talked about Paul Young's uh, Wherever I Lay My Hat, or the first hit single that Pino Palladino actually played on, and how he made that bass line that made the whole song popular. Did they give that no. to you in dots or oh sing god it to no, you? no no I, I can't even read music so if they if they did they wouldn't have had much joy yeah. <laughs> no it's just something i kind of hear it in my head when they suggested um something for the intro and i just had an idea to play this melody which was a... now when you get to this it's the sound of that song well, that's actually Stravinsky, so we'd have to give credit to Stravinsky on that bit. And this is not the same as Coldplay blatantly stealing the whole melody and harmonic structure of a song by Joe Satriani. This is different because you're using phrases that you have learned over the years of playing your instruments and putting your own spin on them to make those phrases your own. And by now you probably either got bored to death or you understood what I'm trying to say here. Because this is exactly what AI is doing, it's learning to imitate, but it's also putting its own spin on it. And this is not the first time that everyone in the music industry got scared of something new. Everyone got scared of the drum machine, everyone thought it would destroy music and put drummers out of their jobs. And then you had drummers like Phil Collins using those drum machines in their biggest hits. Vinyl manufacturers got scared with the introduction of the CD, and even though it took us 20 plus years, vinyl surpassed CDs in sales, and it's making up to 70% of revenue of all physical music sales. Everyone got scared of Napster, but somehow the music industry adapted and today we can all listen to music for free on YouTube and Spotify. And I'm not saying that this is right, but it is what it is. But the music industry is not the only industry that got one of those jump scares throughout the years. Just take a listen to this speech by Billy Wilder from 1986. I have been here for over 50 years, that's more than half a century. And all through those years, I've watched Tinseltown vacillate between despair and fear. First, it's going to be the sound that will kill us. Then it was going to be television, then cable, then cassettes. And now that terrifying new word, uh, microchip. They tell me that those guys uh, working in the Silicon Valley, they really believe that pretty soon we will not need theaters anymore, nor studios for that matter. We will. Uh, have or they will have invented tiny little screens which you can attach to your steering wheel or big 20-foot screens on the ceiling of your bedroom and then someday somebody is going to press a button and send this signal to a satellite which in turn will light up 500 sc 5 million screens all the way from uh, Albania to Zanzibar. Fantastic, isn't it? All the hardware is there, beautifully programmed, bravo, except for one little detail. What about the software? on all those screens. Who is going to write it? Who is going to direct it? Who is going to act it? 
For all I know, these wise guys are trying right now to supplant the human factor, microchips that will replace the human brain and the human heart. Mechanical gadget gadgets that can simulate emotions, dreams, laughter, tears. Well, so far they have not succeeded, not yet anyway. So relax, fellow picture makers. We are not expendable. The fact is, the bigger they get, the more irreplaceable we become. There's maybe the kingdom, but ours is the power and the glory. And sure, AI will impact the music industry, and it is obviously doing it right now, but it will never be able to reinvent itself and invent a new genre or subgenre of music on its own. And last year it was 50 years of hip hop. Compared to blues and jazz, that's literally nothing. But when you take a look at EDM, you have dubstep and industrial techno that have been around for only 20 years. So what I'm saying is, it will never invent something new, but it will surely stir up the top of the pop charts as they are the ones they will need to reinvent themselves by doing something different for a change than using the same pattern to make the same BS song over and over again. And look, don't kid yourself, most of the pop songs at the top of the charts already sound like they were made by AI. And Rick Beato perfectly said this in one of his videos where he compared the lyrics of some of the songs by the Beatles with some of the most streamed songs today. It's so anemically bad it's really hard to believe that 500 million people or 500 million times this thing got played, it probably got played by 5 million people 100 times each or whatever that would be. I guess that's right. This is written by six or seven people and produced by seven or eight people. I mean, really. And no one said to her, maybe we should work on the lyrics a little more. So the real question here is, should we ban AI? And if we should, for what reason? Because it is doing the same thing that we are doing. It is learning, it is adapting, and it is just replicating what it already heard, just like we are. Should we ban it for replicating a voice, for copying a voice? Well, a lot of people have done that and we're not banning them, but sure, let's ban AI or regulate it so it can't impersonate other singers or rappers. So we don't get Hitler singing Give Peace a Chance, because that would be stupid, right? Well, well, to a degree, because it would be a meme. But then again, it can bring singers and rappers that are not with us anymore back to life. And I myself would love to hear a new Jimi Hendrix song. And I loved when I heard Tupac's Tupac's new song where he dissed or like called out the people that killed him. But even if we ban it from doing certain things or even if we regulate it in some way, where does it stop? Should Chad GPT not be permitted to give you like any chord ideas or write out harmony for you? If so, there is a lot of plugins that already do this and a ton of musicians are using those plugins to get inspired. Should we get rid of them or should we get rid of like while well, we're already here? We, I think we should get rid of autotune and meltdown because yeah, a lot of people that can't sing are actually singing and that's not right and that's like machine learning or, or whatever and uh yeah like it should not be permitted so yeah 99 percent of the music industry is just done like immediately just done or maybe we ban machine learning and ai plugins that are listening to our mixes and making like mixed decisions for us because like it's ai again so why not it's just putting mix engineers out of their jobs you need to understand this ai will only recreate things that that it already heard, but it has no creativity and it will never be as bold as Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Kramer when they started using flangers and phasers in a creative manner in Jimi's songs. And AI will recreate Steven Ray Wands or Clapton's or BB King's phrasing and it will understand the one, four, five blues progression and how to build interesting passing chords for it. But in the end, isn't that what we are all doing? We are all borrowing from each other and that's the most beautiful part about music. And and even now some people are gonna say that it's gonna destroy music, but I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think that it's gonna help us out with our creativity. And let me demonstrate. All right, so as I've said at the beginning of the video, this is not a sponsored video in any way, and this is not a paid promotion. This is just like a website that I found out by my community. And if you wanna join my community Discord, the link is down in the description. And uh, yeah, it's uh, udo.com or whatever. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. And a couple of days ago, I gave it a prompt to make a song about me or about Grumpy Eye. That's my artist's name. So uh, I I told it to make a soul song and this is what it made.
It's just crazy. It is crazy that we are already there. Sing it, AI. Just fucking build it out. There we go. It's just crazy. And obviously the sound is not there yet. It just doesn't sound like a real song. But if you ever made a beat and if you ever sample something, you will understand how good of a creativity tool this is. So gone are the days of clearing a sample so you can release your record. Or if you're into other kinds of music, you can use this tool to get inspired to write new songs. And honestly, I think that AI music should be seen as that, as a tool or something that is there to spark your creativity. And in the end, real musicians will understand this. Music is not a competition, it is a conversation. And it's all about how good you are at expressing yourself with your instrument or your voice or whatever. And it is all about your musical vocabulary and how creative you can be with it. It doesn't matter if you're a rapper or a singer-songwriter, AI will be able to copy you, sure, but it will never be able to create something that is new and unique. But then again, if you're just a copycat and you're not creative at all, then you're gonna have an issue with it. And no, I'm not calling those people from that list at the start copycats because they are not. Like, I love and admire Stevie Wonder, Nora Jones and Jason Isbell to, to name a few. But I think that they are getting a jump scare that we already had with drum machines, with Napster or streaming or whatever, or like Hollywood did or the film industry with sound or VHS or whatever. We are not going anywhere and we will all live through this and it will not destroy the music industry or any industry for that matter. But it will change it forever. But I believe it's gonna be in a good way. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching and thank you to all my patrons that are supporting me and my channel members. So if you wanna support me, there's gonna be a link down in the description of the video and consider subscribing. It's a new channel. I just made it like a couple of weeks ago. So uh, yeah, help me out with a subscribe. Uh, like I'm mostly doing like music production stuff and like music stuff. So for that, I guess like if you want to watch that kind of stuff, just leave a subscribe and don't forget to bring a towel when you're traveling through space. Bye.